G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are continuing our series looking at individual draft prospects ahead of the 2024 AFL Draft. If you want to see other players I've done in this series so far, click up in the top right corner, you get a playlist. I think this is player 19 in the series. And today we're doing Harry Armstrong. It's come to my attention, we haven't done a lot of key position players in this series. So There's been a heavy bias towards midfielders and small forwards. Uh, this is just the second key position player we're going to talk about, but that is reflective of this year's draft. There does seem to be quite a lot of highly rated midfielders, particularly at the pointy end, and Harry Armstrong presents as potentially the best key position forward in this year's draft. Certainly the highest rated at this current point of time. Now, will he be the first one taken? It's still a bit of an unknown, but for a large period of the year, he has been talked about as a top 10 prospect, and we're gonna talk about why that is. So he's a 195 centimeter key forward prospect and has been considered the best key forward prospect in this year's draft, particularly following the national championships where he played really well for Vic Metro. So to describe him as a key forward, he's quite athletic and one of those players that continually hits the scoreboard with great consistency and is very accurate in front of goal. The good thing about Armstrong is that even when his form is ebbing and flowing and perhaps he's having a day where he's not really getting a lot of the footy, he still bobs up and hits the scoreboard quite consistently. On top of that, he has a very accurate set shot, and that is one of the hallmarks of his game. And I think he kicked 27 goals 10 in the Coates Talent League this year before kicking 9 goals 3 in the National Carnival. If there was a game that truly elevated him into being a top 10 smoky in this year's draft, it was the final game of the national championships where he kicked five goals as Vic Metro narrowly beat Vic Country. He's an athletic prospect, particularly when it comes to speed and athleticism, and that allows him to get good separation on his opponent. He doesn't play a lot up the ground, but that is something that could improve as he improves his endurance base. That's probably where the upside comes from Armstrong. He's a very good close to goal player, very good at burning his opponent on the lead and losing them with a quick change of direction. Finished seventh in the agility test at the draft combine. So in terms of that quick off the mark sort of pace he's got, that's what makes him a very hard opponent for defenders to match up on. So to summarize his strengths and weaknesses, uh, we talked about that athleticism. It's not so much around the endurance space. He could prove his ability to work up the ground, gather more possessions than he currently does. But in terms of speed, both off the mark and in a lateral direction, that is definitely one of his strengths. Another one is competitiveness. And this really comes to the fore when you see how hard he runs to get balls. That it, Sometimes there's a ball coming inside 50 and it doesn't look like he'll quite get to it, but he use that speed and that desire to get to the footy and market. Contested marking in the air is particularly a strength as well. He hangs around a lot close to goal and takes marks in a pack situation fairly consistently. So he's got strong hands to take those contested marks in a pack situation. But like I said, he uses that athleticism, that speed off the mark to generate separation between him and the defender. And it can make him very hard to stop. And on top of that, he is very consistent in front of goal, regularly hitting the scoreboard. And when he gets set shots in particular, he is very accurate. In terms of weaknesses, I already touched on his endurance. I'm not sure exactly how poorly he tests or anything like that. I just mean that in a game scenario, you don't see him pushing up the ground as much as say like a Jeremy Cameron, who is an extreme example, I'll grant you that. But he doesn't get a high possession counts because he's not working up the ground to win the footy. However, he is so dangerous close to goal that even when he's having a quiet day, he can kick five goals from eight or nine possessions. So that does make him a little bit patchy in terms of four quarter contribution, but he is a pretty reliable spearhead. And when given the opportunity inside 50, he generally does a good job of taking it. So where he goes in this year's draft is another difficult one. So, you know, not so long ago, we were discussing the possibility of North Melbourne trading down to draft him somewhere post pick five, whether that be with Richmond. I don't know exactly where that sits as it currently stands. I'm not sure if a deal with Richmond is likely at all. So the earliest part of his range was probably if North Melbourne traded down to secure him with their need for a key forward. But in the absence of that, other clubs that have been linked to him coming from Kaltumi include Richmond, which makes sense. I do think there will be an appetite for a key forward for the Tigers in this year's draft, whether they decide to do that in the first four picks, which is probably what it's gonna to require to get Harry Armstrong onto their list. They'd certainly be a contender. There has been a link to Melbourne. They do have two selections at this current point in time. Those sit at five and nine. Would they use one of them on Harry Armstrong? It remains to be seen. Similarly with St Kilda, they currently hold seven and eight as it currently stands. I don't imagine they're likely to take Harry Armstrong with one of those selections, but it is entirely possible, you know, they could trade back in the draft and pick him up somewhere in the teens. So my personal opinion, the most likely is probably Richmond. And I think he could still be available at what is currently pick 14. What will largely dictate his range is how many teams really have an appetite for a key forward in this year's draft. Not all teams will. So after Richmond, you've got West Coast, you've got GWS, you've got Port Adelaide, you've got Fremantle. I'm not sure how many of those clubs really will be looking for a key forward, Perhaps you could sell me on GWS. 
I can't imagine Port Adelaide would take him. West Coast certainly don't have a need for a key forward. So it's a little bit up in the air where he goes. And these things might actually be dictated by whether or not we see live trades on the night. So like I said, if St Kilda trade back, then suddenly it makes it more sense for Harry Armstrong to end up there. But like I said, probably the highest rated key forward prospect in this year's draft. For clarity, Cal Toomey ranked him at number 10 in his last Phantom form guide. I think North Melbourne does make sense for someone like a Harry Armstrong, but they don't currently hold a pick that is appropriate. Essendon could trade back in. There's been also talks of Job Shanahan. So it all remains to be played out exactly where Armstrong goes. But he is a very reliable, athletic key forward prospect. And if he improve his endurance base to work up the ground, he will be an A-grade key forward. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you think of Harry Armstrong as a prospect. Let me know if you think your club has a need for a key forward in this year's draft. For now, I'll thank you for watching. Thank you for being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.